Good afternoon, y'all. It is Susan, and um, I am. I thought I'd get a little crafting in. I have to pick up my husband. It's uh, about 10.50 now, so I have to pick him up about uh, 3 o'clock. Um, so I have to leave here about 2. Um, but anyway, I decided I would work on my book for a little bit. Um, since we have still so much to, more to do, and we're only on video. We're, we're, I mean, we are on video 13. I think this is going to be 14. 14 or 15. I don't know how many videos it's going to take to finish this up. And, you know, if you guys want to hang with me, that's fine. Um, I thought I would uh, go ahead and just, you know, video the whole process. So, um, you know, I don't know if that's what you want to see or not. So I guess you have the choice to watch it or not. And I really appreciate those that do. Um, and hopefully, you know, I, I hopefully I have, you know, given you some inspiration and, um, you know, made you feel like if you were ever kind of afraid of doing them or whatever, it kind of took that fear away because, um, because you can do it. Anybody can do it. I mean, not anybody, but I mean, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't want to make it sound like it's nothing. I mean, you know, many albums are hard work and, um, they're a lot of fun and, um, and it takes patience, you know, so patience, that's the biggest thing. Um, and right now, if y'all are watching all my videos, y'all have that patience. So, all right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do an envelope here. Um, envelope doesn't fit, but we're going to make it fit. I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, and I do, this is the envelopes that I use, um, the recollections. Um, these are really good ones. I really like these. They have a really good weight. They work really well. Um, so the biggest thing with putting an envelope here is you don't want it too wide or your page is not going to close. So we're going to trim it down just a little bit. Um, and sorry, I cleaned up. I had to clean up for my husband because I have craft stuff on every single surface. Um, <laughs> and that's not unusual for me. All right, so I'm going to go about four and a half. I think four and a half will be good. Um, and we are going to dry fit it. Um, so, you know, we're going to just test it and see what happens. Um, generally, um, we tape this closed, tape the envelope closed, uh -oh, this tape is crazy, I better put it on the counter, um, because we don't need that flap, and actually, if you wanted to leave the flap, you could actually do some really cool design elements with the flap, um, but we're going, for this purpose, we're going to close it up, okay, and then on the bottom, just the bottom side. I guess it doesn't really matter what side you use, but I'm just going to trim off a little bit. Um, and this is no different than most of the other tutorial videos you've seen out there for envelope mini. It's kind of the same concept. So we're just going to um, use it in this mini album. And I just cut off a little bit, you know, because uh, it's got to be four. So I thought I would cut from the top and the bottom, which may be silly. It really doesn't matter, quite honestly. So. <laughs> Anyway, you could, you could cut it all from the bottom if you want. So we're going to cut it to, I believe we said four. Yep, four. Four should be good. Um, we're not going to put any tags in here that are going to be too long. Um, yeah, and you could actually go a little longer than four if you wanted to. Um, but you know what, though? You can do them different throughout the book because you have this little hinge here, and that's what this little hinge is for. Um, so basically what you want to do is you want to cut your hinge um, and you know sometimes you want to cut your hinge here at an angle just a slight angle like that nothing special and then what I do is I measure and then I cut it pretty close uh, I'm coming up just a little bit short of the envelope just a little bit short um, just so I can make sure that this fits on there well. Um, this is a real easy thing to do. And it adds, um, you know, some, some interactive stuff to the book. Okay, so that's basically what that's going to look like there. Um, make sure I got everything straight there. kind of looks like maybe I'm not straight on my hinge. See, this is why you've got to measure, measure, measure. You know, just make sure that it looks pretty straight. And you may have to manipulate that when you um, when you attach it to your hinge, um, but that's okay. And you know, I don't have my round punch. I wished, I wished, I wished I had my round punch. 
um, but I don't because you know I'm out of pocket. And what I'm going to do particularly for this one is I want to make it, um, I want to have the roundness. So I'm going to have to fussy cut it, um, which should be interesting. I hope I do well, but um, I'm going to just use this. <laughs> you know, for crafters, everything is a tool, right? So I'm just going to use that and I'm going to, I'm going to trace it and fussy cut it. So you don't have to have all those fancy tools. If you don't have something to work on your project, you know, to make your project work the way you want, just think about what you have in your kitchen. All right, so I'm going to try to cut this to the best of my ability. Um, and you know, and I did make note of um, how deep that circle. Well, actually, you can keep this for a template. So when we cut our designer paper, um, you can just trace this and then cut your designer paper, unless you. Have a stay, you know, a punch um, that's a circle punch. Um, that would certainly be the easiest way to do this. Um, but we're gonna. Sorry, I cut really slow, don't I? Uh, <laughs> you never realize those things until you get on camera. See, that worked out pretty well. I think that looks pretty good. All right, and then I'm going to pick out some paper, and then sometimes I do um, use the paper, the same paper on both sides. It just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Um, and, and here again, you could use your supplement paper, like if you're using the glitzy paper or whatever. Um, you know, you don't have to use the paper from the paper stack, but you can if you want. Um, so I think that looks really cute, but I don't know if that's long enough. Um, so it's basically the length that I need. I should tell you, I, I did show you, but the dimension on these envelopes are five by six and a half inches. Um, you, they don't have to be that size. You can use any envelope that you have because this hinge allows you to customize. This hinge right here, it allows you to customize it to whatever size you have. You just want to cut it a little short than your envelope. So it's real simple, it's real easy. Um, so I'm just gonna, so we know that this is probably six and a half. I think that's what, do you know how I measure? So I'm just gonna just double check it. Um, no, yeah, it's seven. What? See, see y'all? That says, okay, that must be the cards. Sorry, y'all. The envelope size. I don't think it tells you. <laughs> That is the note card size. Because um, I know I can't measure, but I'm pretty sure that this is not the same size. So these envelopes are actually seven and a quarter by five and a half. Yep. Okay, seven and a quarter by five and a half. Or five and a quarter, sorry. Seven and a quarter by five and a quarter. Now you don't, they don't have to be that size. I'm just telling you what I've got here. Um, so I actually, um, will need, if I go with this pattern, I will need an, an additional piece for the back. Um, so I might, um, that's two, the greens are too different there, so I have to pull that instead because I don't think I have anything in my scraps. Um, you know, I don't think I've used that design. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to use. I think that will be, I mean, the green's a little bit different. I really like that one, so we're going to figure out which one that is. Yep, it's the uh, Bugs. All right. Yeah, I like that because it doesn't, it doesn't overwhelm me with the green color, and the greens in this stack are different, um, which probably is fine. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to cut this, you know, I do like a court, like a, a fourth of an inch, which allows me one eighth of an inch on the edges. So this is four. That's what I cut it down to was four. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this to four. And unfortunately, the sizes do not allow me to conserve my paper. Um, you know, uh, you know, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my length first because that way I can have a nice scrap left. Um, and my length is seven and a quarter. So I'm going to cut it at, 
you know, and I say seven and a quarter, it's just slightly under. It's, um, unless this ruler is crazier than I am, it actually looks more like seven and one eighth. So I'm going to go uh, six and seven eighths. Six and seven eighths. Yep, one more measure. Six and seven eighths. And the really cool thing about this board is it has the seven eighth measure mark, which is really cool. I have not had anything that has that mark, so that is really nice. It, it clearly lists it, which is when you're crazy like me. <laughs> so, and then we have four, four, so we're going to do three and three fourths. All right, three and three fourths. And then I'm just going to measure it. Yep, I like that. That looks good. So we'll do another one that's three and three fourths. And you know, sometimes I do different paper. It just depends. It really depends on how much scrap I have left too and what type of scraps I have. Um, I'm going to really use this paper though because I, um, I haven't really used a lot of the sheets throughout the book. So, and then I'm just going to, um, use my template here. Hope that I've got it in the middle. Uh, I do believe I do. Um, if you want to be sure, just measure it. So this is about seven. It's six and seven eighths, so two, three. I think that looks good. I'm just going to draw my template on there. And you're probably already done if you have a punch. They definitely make your life easier. But it's not detrimental if you don't have one, so just trace it out. This might take me a very long time to cut because I've had like eight cups of coffee this morning. We had a nice morning this morning. I, I let Gus Gus stay over, the neighbor's dog, and um, I sat outside with the boys and popcorn and let them play. And uh, Gus Gus is a fetcher. He fetches. He's only about six months old. And um, so, and he doesn't really get a lot of outdoor playing time. Uh, Ken does walk them, you know, they walk, and uh, he'll walk them to the mailbox, and that doesn't seem like that's a lot, but actually the, the driveway's pretty long, so it, where we live, we share a driveway with one other house, and it's pretty long, so he walks them to the mailbox every day, and then when Gus Gus escapes, um, he comes over here, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, he escaped this morning, and I just decided to to tell my neighbor or ask my neighbor or whatever that, you know, just let them stay out here and play with the boys. And he had so much fun. They all did. Um, my, my other, my oldest male dog is about 16 and he's really grumpy. He barks a lot. And um, did you see how I did that? I just used, I believe I just used this as a template. That way that they're in the same spot. So when you put them on the envelope, it's good. Um, anyway, so he's grumpy, and he doesn't play very much. Um, he would really rather just bark and, and uh, annoy poor Andy, who's a puppy. I mean, he's not a puppy. He's about four years old, but to me, that's a puppy. Um, all right, so there we go. That looks pretty good. Um, and this envelope, which is a, it's, hmm, it almost looks like it, I'm trying to see if it has a black core. Kind of looks like it doesn't, um, but it's a very, very thin, and that just could be my eyes. I think I'm going to stick with it though, but if you have a, a white core, you might want to ink it. I'm going to stick with it. I think I'm fine with that. All right, so now, oh, we've got to put our 
paper on. Anyway, so I guess I stayed over for about 45 minutes. I drank about eight cups of coffee, sat out in the yard, let him play, threw a ball. He's a fetcher. He loves to fetch. He's just the cutest dog. I do not know what kind he is. He's some type of a shepherd, but like a miniature shepherd. I don't know if he's a... I say shepherd, but I mean, like, he kind of looks like a mini collie. But I, I don't think he is, but he could be. I don't know. And see, it's just a little off. Um, it's just a little off there. It um, just depends on what you can live with there. You can trim it, you know, if you wanted to. And I'm kind of afraid to trim it because... If I do, I'm going to mess it up. So, I'm just going to try to place it where it's not so obvious. You know what? Let me try the other side. Because you know what? Sometimes there are two sides. Yep. That's the case. See how that happened? There are two sides. And I just hope I cut the other side. I didn't even think about that. So, it's a good thing you're watching. Um, if, if it's not exactly center, <laughs> there are two sides. But you know what we did? We just switched over and used the other side, by golly. How about that? There you go. That works for me. <laughs> oh, I forgot to ink the edges. Ah, oh, darn it. I'm having one of those days. This would be a good time to ink your edges. <laughs> um, I don't know that you can really tell on there. I don't know if I even want to try to... You know, maybe I'll just give it the illusion that it's got ink on there. Yeah, that's okay. It, it will change the color of the black paper, so you kind of want to try to be careful and not get it on the black paper. But if you do get it on the black paper, that's fine. Just be consistent with it, right? Um, not a big deal. Alright. I've been doing so good, I think, with inking my edges. And then I forgot. Um, got some flyaway hair there. It's tickling my face. All right. There. That looks okay. I'm going to go ahead and ink that edge. So that would be the same. That would be the case even with the punch. Um, if it's not exactly 100% in the middle, which to the eye it may look like it is, but then when you lay the paper down, it may not be. So if you're using single-sided paper, just keep that in mind. You'll have to, you know, you'll have to flip it over and trace it on the back side. One on the front side and one on the back side. So which side do I want to show? I want to, I think I'm going to do that. Yep. Okay. hope you can see that. I just decided um, which side of the envelope is going to go on which side. I'm going to put this on this side because it matches that really well. And I'm going to put that on that side because it matches that really well. Um, so I've cleaned up all my stuff. So it's all in my little storage area. I'm going to have to walk over to it. So sorry about that. And um, you can put the tape on here before you put your hinges in, whatever's more comfortable. And here, again, you want to kind of try to keep it at the top, um, just in case, you know, so you, so you don't have tape hanging out of your, the bottom of your pocket. And before you cut it, you can actually tape it all the way across. That would certainly make life a lot easier. We are going to use all of the hinge, but we're, we're not going to use it all for the envelope. And I did this in my Couture album, and, and now that I think about this, it's not a big deal, but I might, you know, if you, I, I would probably leave the tape off of this hinge, but um, because what we're going to do, I just have to decide how we're going to do it. We're going to put a tag on there or whatever, a little flap. All right. 
this over here and just at the top as much as you can. Okay. Now, if um, if you are doing a long item and you still want to do a flap, um, you can certainly cut this here. You can cut it in half. You only need, you know, just a portion of this to hinge your whatever it is you're putting in there. Um, but uh, you would just use wet glue to seal the rest of the envelope. Um, so, like, say this hung way past here, you just use a little wet glue there to seal it. Probably it's not a big deal if you don't do that, but. Um, I mean, what, you know, tags don't generally fall out, but, you know, if you have a small tag in there, it might get, you know, kind of wonky there, so that's the theory behind that. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off, and, um, yes, I did commit to both sides of the tape, but this is, when you're dealing with a single layer, it's a lot easier, and <laughs> watch it give me grief, <laughs> hopefully not. That would be classic though. Um, you, well, you might want to decide which side you want your tag onto. I'm going to put it over here on this side, so, um, and you'll see what I'm talking about when we get to that point. And you just want to make sure that it is lined up with your other page or shorter. You know, it doesn't have to be perfectly the length. It just depends on what you are okay with seeing. And I think that's pretty straight. It looks pretty straight to me. Um, you know how I like to lay it down. That looks good. Okay, I'm going to go with that. All right, see that was a much easier. <laughs> um, when you're doing just a single layer, it works so much better, y'all. So, um, you want to, especially since we have this little flap, you could always, if you decided that you didn't, um, if you trim that down, then you would be able to leave the flap on the inside. I'm going to leave mine on top of my signature because um, I just like that look. Oh, my, my hinge just kind of gave me a little grief there. But anyway, so you have options is what I'm trying to say. Alright, so I'm going to look in my little uh, uh, ephemera pack that I got the other day at, at um, Michael's. Actually, I wonder, 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 wonder. Some of these images are just so cute. Hmm. Maybe it should be something cute. Oh, God, you know, I just love that one. I am. I'm, I'm going to go with that. It's not a picture of anybody in our real family, but... <laughs> I just think it's cute. I don't know. You think that goes? I mean, it would be a good way to use that. Well, we'll put it here and we're going to look at the ephemera pack real quick. I don't know. I think it's pretty cute. I just, I just love that little cowboy. It makes me think of my stepfather. Um, he's a cowboy and I, I know he probably just used to dress up like Roy Rogers when he was a kid. <laughs> so it reminds me of him. So cute. Um, I probably have even seen a picture of something similar to that. I don't know. Of him. Maybe. All right. So we're just going to look and see. I'm really kind of feeling that, but the book is not really, um, in my mind, it's not really focused on people. So... I mean, it kind of is, but it kind of isn't. Um, I like that. Oh, you know what? I do like that. We're going to stick with that. Um, oh, I wish y'all could vote. <laughs> I wish y'all could tell me what to do. Because that is so stinking cute. Oh, Y'all are going to tell me in my comments, oh, you should have gone with that picture. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do it. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to do it. I think it's cute. And I've never really used an image like that in my mini albums, so. And y'all, I am really bad about this. 
I do not cut my photo mats according to photo size. You might be a little more detail oriented in that way. So um, I just figure people can edit pictures. <laughs> so I give them a photo mat per what paper scrap I'm using, you know what I mean? So um, I, none of my sizes are gonna make any logical sense as far as printing a photograph. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and having it fit perfectly once it's printed. So just know that in advance that you might want to do a little more detail measuring. I'm, I just, I try to use my scraps and, um, and give them lots of places to fit photos. Now I wish I really had my, um, my round, my corner punch, cause that would be really nice. It would be a really clean look. Um, so if you have a corner punch, you might just want to round that off. Or not. You can leave it square. And I'm, I am going to ink my edges on that. And that's going to give it a nice um, vintage, a more vintage look. And um, this is um, vintage photo that I'm using. I did say in the earlier video, but I'll go ahead and tell you again. Okay. So, how we're going to do this, um, since, uh, see, I kind of messed myself up a little bit, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, normally, what I would have done on this hinge is I would have only put tape on one side, um, but... Since, since this is going to need some durability, really, um, because it's going to be a solo, it's got such a short hinge to be attached to, um, what I think we'll do is, I think we're going to um, mat it. And I think I'm going to mat it with this paper and I'm going to come real tight on the edge and what that's going to do is just because the hinge is so short and technically I could have just cut this hinge right here in the middle and then I would have more hinge on this or or you know you could just use a smaller image but and maybe that's a better idea I'm sorry I'm going back and forth the only reason I say that is because um, it, you could might have a tendency to pull on it um, and, you know it, it could it might tear so um, just want to be careful of that so I think that'll be good we're gonna stick with that and I have a nice piece right here that's already ready And those are things that you need to think about, you know, because you're going to be careful with it, but somebody else might not be as careful. And, you know, and you know what? It's not that they're just careless with it. They just don't realize how fragile they are. Um, gosh, I've seen people that, you know, I don't know if y'all are the same way, and maybe you're not, but when somebody picks up one of your albums that you've made, you're like, ah, oh, be careful. <laughs> you know? I don't know. I'm such a weirdo. Um, let's see. How big is that? That is two and three fourths. And that is somewhat of a decent measurement. Two and three fourths. All right, so I'm just, I did, I, what I did was I opted to do it just a little bit, um, to use a smaller one since we did just a little portion here. And that's fine, you know. Um, but, and I'm going to double up my car stock just so, um, which is going to be a little tricky because you want to make sure you get your cardstock on there right. And you may even want to make it a little bigger, um, but, you know, it just depends. Um, so if I did it a little bigger, no, I can't use that one. Just have to make sure that you get your paper on there straight. All right. Oops. Somehow my measuring was not that great. 
It doesn't surprise y'all though. Alright, so this is how I make a mini album, y'all. This is it. Um, I sit at my desk generally. Generally, I don't stand up. But um, I have a lot of fun doing this. Um, I'd like to be challenged, so I'd like to figure out how I can make it a little bit different. I'm not as clever as some of those girls yet, ladies and guys, that can make up their own album. I mean, I guess I could, but I've watched so many videos, so it's a little bit hard now because I have all these ideas in my mind that actually belong to other people. Um, but I do try to make them different um, just because I enjoy that kind of a challenge. So, um, And I might use, not that it really matters, but I might use just this tape right here. Um, and you could do a fancy uh, border punch on these. That'd be really pretty. Have a nice cute little border punch going that way. So the only reason I'm doubling up the cardstock, and you could use a chipboard underneath there. That'd be good. I think I've done that before. Um, I just have the heavyweight chipboard, but like a lightweight chipboard would be really good. Just that way it doesn't, you know, when somebody's flipping through, they don't accidentally rip it right off the hinge. That's the only thing that I feel that I just love making these, and I. I, I love the way I feel afterwards, but there's, I, I, I feel like they're very fragile, too. So, I kind of have to be careful with them. Sometimes you kind of have to help the person out that you're giving it to. Make sure it's sturdy. Alright. I'm just taking the tape off there. I probably didn't need that heavy duty tape, but I'm going to go ahead and run with it anyway. And then I'm going to take the tape off of here. And then I'm going to try to get this on there as straight as I can. I'm going to try not to get it stuck to the envelope behind it. Alright, so that looks pretty straight to me. So now I'm going to just bend this down. Like that. Take off this tape. This will be the true test if I can get this on there perfectly. Probably want to, might want to turn it around. Sorry, I think I'm going to have my head right in the way. Um, I'm going to turn it around. Just match it as best as I can. I know I do have to put my head in the way. I'm sorry because i got to see exactly where it is. All right. There we go. Yeah. All right, that works. So, and you know, you could make a pocket there. That'd be a good place for a pocket. Or you can just leave it as it is. Somebody can journal on the back. They can put a picture right there. Um, and it's just kind of a nice break. It just looks, I think it looks good. So we are done with that center. That one went really quickly. Sometimes the centers take a while. <laughs> that was a southern wow. Sometimes they take a really long time. Okay. All right. So we got that. I'm going to flip the page over. Oh, and you know, when we cut off yesterday, I apologize for that. I actually did record it. I just wanted y'all to see what it looks like with all of the tags in there. Um, I think it looks nice. I think it looks clever and cute. So I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, it looks different. You can't really say that, um, you know, I haven't watched every video out there, but I mean, it looks different than something I might have seen in the last lately while, late while, you know. I mean, I haven't seen anything that looks exactly like that, so. All right, so we're going to the next center. And um, sometimes I do a, um, a waterfall. Um, the only thing is, is you want to take in consideration if you do a waterfall here, you don't want it to get too thick. Um, and only being because we have this, you have a nice half inch gusset here though, so you can, it can, you know, it can get pretty thick, um, but not overly thick. You don't want to go too crazy because um, you want them to shut properly. So you can just do like three or four. Sometimes I do like a little, um, 
I might not even put a backing on it. I'll just do a few pieces of paper. And I, we'll do that here. Um, so basically, I just eyeball this. We're going to put three. We'll do three in here. So I just eyeball this as best I can. Um, it's not a big deal because you're going to cover it with paper. So just try to cut it in two areas. Um, your photo mat is going to be bigger than your cuts. So it's not that big of a deal, y'all. And it is good to just kind of taper your edge just a little bit. It doesn't have to be major. When you taper it and you cover it with paper, um, it won't show as badly. Um, you don't have that bulk on the side. So I'm just going to taper all. These are really good scissors too, by the way, y'all. I uh, had bought them in a previous haul because, you know, I was trying to get some tools here. And um, it's the first time I've tried these. And I, I do like them. You probably don't want to pull on it like I just did there. You just want to cut it. Um, there we go. Because they are kind of fragile. So, all right. And that just flew on the floor, so. Oh, it's so funny. One day I was making flowers. I found this great tutorial, and I don't know what her um, channel name is. Excuse me, I need more coffee. Um, it's Emily, she's from the UK, and she does this great flower video. Oh, it's so cool. It, any, I mean, it's so, I don't want to say it's so easy. She makes it so easy. Um, anyway, you make it out of organza or any kind of fabric that you kind of burn without, you know, destroying it. It kind of melts the ends of it, but it's so neat. It's like a, you could do like a five or a six petal flower. You just cut them by hand. You just, actually, I'm, what you do is you, you have a circle of fabric and you just cut lines all the way through to make your petals and then you you hold it a really cool way and you over a candle and they say to actually have you know some water there in case it catches on fire and then you just you lightly touch the flyer the the fire with you know you just just barely lightly hold it over the fire and it melts the ends and um it just makes the prettiest flower and i'm not even sure where i was going with that we were talking about emily um oh well sorry <laughs> all right so i'm gonna cut my um i'll probably remember it <laughs> in about an hour i'll be like oh yeah that's what it was um i really have no rule of thumb here um and this is where you could take actual measurements i'm i think i'm going to i think i'm going to do this what, what I would like to see is three. I'd like to see a nice, even, you know, a nice balanced look. So I'm going to start with three. Three by, these are a little bit too long. So, um, how would that be easier? How wide is this? Yes, yeah, I can't get six out of there. So I'm just going to do three yeah. so our paper is nine so if I do three I'm gonna do four inches four inches because I don't want it to perfectly fit the paper or the, the page I don't want it to perfectly fit the page so that is four by, and didn't we do this? We did the uh, envelope at four, I believe, yeah. I'm gonna do four by four. Um, yeah, four by four. I think that will be good. Well, you can just look at it this way. If the photo doesn't fill up the whole page, they can, they can journal. <laughs> If you want, you can look and see what the measurements are for actual pictures and make your photo mass according to what those are. I just don't do that. I'm sorry. To me, it's just much more practical to use what I have. And you know, with today's technology, you can um, you can cut, you can you can make the pictures as big or small as you want. So it works out really well. Okay. Alright, so probably what we want to do here is place the top one 
and the back one, and then we'll place the middle one. So when you're doing this, you've got to remember how it's going to flow in your book. So you want the top one to be first. You just want to make sure your hinges are where they need to be. Um, and the way that I normally do this is... Um, put it on the top and then you'll lay your designer paper over it. Um, you may have just a little bit of an edge, but, and we can test it real quick. So we have four by four here and uh, what paper do we want to use? We used that the last time and I have, yeah, this will be pretty. And you can do um, both sides. The, if you do both sides, it's going to be thicker um, and it'll last longer. Or you can just do the top side. I try to always, you know, think about journaling too. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna cut this real tight, and I'm gonna cut this at since they're four. I'm gonna try three and seven eighths first. And the reason why I'm cutting that so tight is because I, I want to hide as much of that hinge as I can, but I want it to have a little bit of a black edge there. So that's actually pretty decent edge to me, so it's very tiny. Um, you, you can do it wider if you want. I'm just trying to really accommodate that hinge so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't, you can't see it. You see that? I don't know if you can tell, but I think you can. You can't really see the hinge underneath, so that will actually work really well. Okay. All right. And like I said before, I cut this hinge. It might be easier just to take all your hinges first, but sometimes you don't know if you're going to have it on the back side or the front side, so really, that's probably not very good advice. But you can always work with what you have because if you have tape on one side, you can just lace, you can put lace on there or something, you know, something cute, some kind of a trim. That's why we always buy that trim. Oh, these scissors are like, they're sharp too. You have to be careful. They are really nice. And speaking of sharp, I really shouldn't be using those on glue. Because <laughs> um, the glue gunks them up. And I use alcohol usually to clean the glue off, but I still don't like to have to do that. And I guess those Tim Holtz scissors are supposed to be glue resistant. I've never bought them, um, so I don't know. Um, and there's no reason why I haven't bought them. I just, I have a tendency to buy, you know, really nice fussy cutting scissors. And then I just have like crazy cheap scissors, you know, for every day, every, like these are cheap. I got those at, um, like Office Depot or something. Came in a pack of three. It was like $12 or something. Because they run off, right? They're always missing. <laughs> I probably have 80 pairs and I just only know where... And I did. I bought the three pack and I think I only really know where one pair is. <laughs> but, you know, I have crafting services, surfaces all over the house. So they're probably... I know I'm working on my fabric album upstairs. So there's probably a pair there. And... Uh, and so on. So I don't invest a lot in scissors, except for a good pair, like when you're fussy cutting or whatever. Alright, so I'm just going to take off this piece first. And get this on here as straight as I can. I don't know if y'all can see me do that here. Just going to try to get it on there as straight as I can. Maybe even kind of lay it on the paper just to make sure it's even with the page. Alright. Yeah, that's pretty good. It works for me. And then I am going to put some tape on here. Now, if you wanted these more stable, you, like I said, you could certainly use some lightweight chipboard. But I'm just using some cardstock. And this might be a good place to use a real heavy cardstock. Um, but I'm just doing this. I haven't, I mean, you know, I don't know. I've given away a lot of these, I guess. I don't really know um, if 
the person has problem with you know flipping these, but it's all paper, so so there, there's the first one. And you can, like I said, you can uh, put something there if you want, or you can just leave it blank. And um, you know, when I was talking about a pen sleeve, I'm jumping stories again, but I do buy these um, uh, these gel pens, and um, what I will do. Um, that's how I did for uh, my husband's granddaughters. I did an album for them for Christmas. I try to make them something every Christmas. Like, um, I, you know, like one year I did an um, a advent calendar. You know, so I try to make them something, at least at Christmas time, I try to make them something. So all you do is just take a, you know, a piece of scrap, you know, scrap paper. And, I mean, you could, uh, you could actually put it right here like that. And then when you lay your paper over it, it's going to cover it. So then they have their pen, and they can journal while they're putting their pictures in there, and they always have their, their, um, you know, the pen. So I like that idea. I think that they don't have to go out and buy a white pen, and they might not think about a white pen, but if you add a white pen, they're most certainly going to think about it. So, all right. So since this paper is so busy, um, and I just hope I have enough of this. I am going to stick with the same pattern. Um, and I'm, I'm just doing that because this paper is really rather busy. So I did this four or three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths for a four inch, um, um, a four inch by a four by four photo mat. All right. So just make sure. Do some dry fitting, make sure everything's all happy. Yeah, I think that'll look nice. Okay. All right, so my little trick here is I'm going to do the bottom one next. And the reason I am doing that is because I have a measuring difficulty and I want to make sure that this is perfectly placed between the first and the last. So that's the only reason I'm doing that. And if you're better at it than I am, then... <laughs> and it is going to be on the back side, right? So... You want to push it to the back. This is going to be your middle, so it needs to stay to the middle. And then really all you have to do is just lay this down, line it up with your page there, and uh, just take off the one side. Oops. So that's what happens when you don't burnish. It doesn't uh, stick properly. You'll know it if it's not burnished enough. It, the tape cover won't come off at all. Generally, and I am having an issue with it. Come on. All right, there we go. All right, so I kind of got it lined up there. I'm just going to push this down like that. Boy, that's much easier than the uh, <laughs> putting the pages in there. And the, I know, I know. Oh, it takes a lot of patience, I tell you. But it's just so much fun. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and tape this up. Oops. You know, I did it again. By golly. Y'all are probably screaming at me over there. I forgot to ink your edges. I do that when I watch videos. I'm like, hey, what, what, what did you do? I talk to my videos all the time. I should do something. I love opinions. I, we, you know, that's how we learn. And, um, and, and that's how we grow. And I will take whatever you say. I, I won't get, I mean, obviously, if it's ugly, I might get offended. But, I mean, I've never had an ugly comment. So, I can't even imagine that that would ever even happen. So, um, but I love your ideas. Like, if you had an idea to do something with this hinge, I'd love to hear it. Love to hear it. Um, so, please, please comment right away. Um, you know, there's a little bit of glue that's hanging off there. That was a little careless of me, so I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to get it out of there. Um, it's really not that bad, but, you know, I am a perfectionist, so I don't even know how it's like, it's kind of weird. It's like, I can see it. Let's see, let me just try to. Be careful. All right. 
I don't know. It's kind of looking crazy there. But you know what? Where's my black pen? <laughs> and I'll, I'll show it to you. Um, it's not bad. It's just I got this. And you know, what you cry, quite honestly, you could put a little, see, see right there? You just got this little bit of a little glue thingy hanging out of there. So I'm just going to try to, if I can't get it off there, it's kind of, there. That's much better. Yeah, it won't bother me anymore. See? That took care of it. Can't even see it, can you? <laughs> You'll have it on Zoom. <laughs> I see it! <laughs> Alright. Okie dokie. Let's get back to this. Alright, so the idea is we want it... <laughs> you know my measuring is so wonky. But you just kind of want it right in the middle, right? You want to make sure that you have the same... Um, width here as you do there somewhat you know it doesn't have to be perfect by any means so i'm just going to lay leave that there and you know and actually that's kind of right in the center so and and and, and that may be actually logical <laughs> i don't know it's so funny i know i probably talked about four things and haven't finished a single story but Somehow, my YouTube, my uh, Facebook account, I'm not sure if it got hacked or if I wasn't paying attention one day and maybe a question popped up. You know, yeah, YouTube is always, or not YouTube, but Facebook is always wanting you to finish your channel, you know, with your, your high school and college and all of that. So maybe something happened where I accidentally said yes. I have no idea. But I went out there, and that was when... Um, all of that stuff was going on with the uh, the websites, how the security, uh, how people, their passwords were getting stolen and all of that. The, um, oh, what was it called? I can't, I can't remember now that I'm trying to think of it. But um, So we had to go out and change, you know, our passwords for, uh, you know, Facebook. Facebook was one of them that was, uh, had a vulnerability. And it was just right about that time, and I had gotten... It was so funny, I looked at it, and it gave me all this college. <laughs> Somebody hacked into my account to give me all this college. And I was like, I didn't even grow up there. I'm sure people that I grew up with, you know, in Memphis were like, what? She didn't do that. Um, but I, I looked at it, and I said, oh my gosh. People probably think I'm a habitual liar. <laughs> so... I told everybody on my Facebook page, I did not do this. I do not know how this got here. I did not go to this college. <laughs> and one of my friends replied back and said, well, well, what was your degree in? <laughs> I, said, I said, well, apparently I'm a rocket scientist. <laughs> so we all got a good giggle out of that. Um, speaking of measurements, you know, just, I'm, not a, I'm not a rocket scientist by any means. Okay. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. And at this point, you could definitely put some paper. And you know what? If you didn't want to put, and actually this would be a really cool thing to do also, I think, um, is put paper on the first one and on the third one and leave this one black here and then put paper on the back middle one um, and then leave these black. And that would look really uh, finished to me. Um, I, the black is bothering me, the straight up black, so I think I am going to put, um, I'm going to, I'm just going to put something here, I think. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do it in the middle. Oh, and actually, here again, this is where you could take advantage of some of your, um, of your stuff here. You know, you could, uh, you could, you know. You could make a little pocket there. How cute would that be? That'd be cute. I have stiffles, sorry y'all. My sinuses are... We put it in the middle of the page. Or maybe you... Maybe you put a pocket here. And then you can have a tag that's that long. To kind of break that up. Because you could certainly do that. That would be cute. 
Sorry, I'm thinking, y'all. Okay. Um, so, yeah, why not? Let's do a pocket. We're going to do a library pocket. It, you know, it, it may or may not work. You may still have to put paper. It just depends on what you like to see. Um, you know what you like to see. You'll look at something that will bother the heck out of you forever. So, um, These are four. So if we do a pocket, it needs to be five. So we have a really good even measurement there. So five by four and a half is what we need. Um, we need a half inch on the sides and a half inch on the bottom, just and not on the top, just on the sides of the bottom. Okay. So that is, uh, so we'll do, this is, Sorry, I wasn't paying much attention. So that is five, which is perfect. And then four and a half. Um, in one of my comments, I said, um, you know, in the very beginning of the videos, it got a little confusing and somebody actually had to clarify with me what, you know, what the sizes were. Um, I do not veer away from a half an inch very often. Um, and to me, that is just easier. I can think much better with that that rule or that train of thought. Um, so if, you, if you're good at customizing, try to have a standard <laughs> that doesn't change very often, unless you're much better at measuring than I am. Okay, so I'm just going to score this at, okay, this is my, my five and a half piece. Yep, okay. I'm just going to score it at a half, right here, just one half here. And then you want a half here. And this measurement does not have to be perfect by any means, so. I mean, it could be a little wonky. I'm, you know me, I'm wonky. I, that seems to be my word of the day. I think I heard it on the video and now I'm just like, um, yeah, so we'll just do that. That'll work. I think that'll be fine. Yeah, why not? Okay. So you have your scores, I don't know if you can see that, there we go, you can probably see that for sure. And I'm just going to cut them at an angle across the minor the edges. And I just, I cut it as straight as I can and just do it to the tip, like that, see, you can see that. And then I'm also going to miter these down, All right. just so they don't hang out. You know, sometimes the flat edge hangs out. You don't even have to mire it that much, just a little bit. All right. And then we'll just fold it. So half an inch, half an inch, half an inch. You can do it as wide as you want or as skinny as you want. It doesn't really matter. So that's the whole fun of it. Because ideally you would like to use your scraps, right? You have scraps left over. All right, and then so we're just going to put tape on the outer edges. I'm going to use the strong tape wherever I have happened to lay that. There it is. Okay. And uh, it's angled, so I'm just going to kind of go with that because apparently I keep forgetting to put my tape on there. Honestly, when I make these books, I just try to figure out what page pattern I'm going to use, and then there's really no planning from there. I mean, really, it's just all haphazard, as you see in my videos. I, I hope y'all enjoy it. I, I hope it's not too much or too long. It's probably going to be like 20 videos, because <laughs> we haven't even embellished yet. So, But anyway, and I'm trying to keep an eye on the iPad, because it cuts off, and it never tells me. So, I don't know. Okay, there we go. And that'll break up the black there. That'll give it some interest. And you could, if you have a nice little fancy punch, you could give it a nice little edge. You see, I put the book together first, and then I work on the centers. Um, just because, you know, when you're putting your pages in, you just want as little complication as possible, as you saw in my video. Now, 
if I were good, I would measure that <laughs> just to make sure that it actually fits. <laughs> so, and, and honestly, if it didn't fit and I've already done all this, I would just make it fit on another page. So I wouldn't waste it. I'd just put it on a piece of black paper and, and use it somewhere else. So try not to stress too much. And I'm going to try to get this on as straight as I can. I'm going to kind of use my fingers. Hopefully I can do this without messing up. So this is probably going to take me an hour. Mostly I just want to make sure that this line is dead on. Right there. And this line. I really like that line to be good too. 